Hello, everyone. I am so sorry about that. Uh, we just had a little technical difficulty, but everything is fixed now and we're ready to go ahead. So, uh, you know, hopefully you're all just laughing along with me because that's just how life goes sometimes. Things just go wrong and you got to roll with it. Uh, so I'm Saya. <laughs> Welcome to Live Art Tuesdays. I am here to... Uh, do a cut landscapes project with you. We are live from the Red Deer Museum and Gallery, and I have with me my friend Mike. You want to say hello, Mike? Hey guys, how's it going? Awesome to have you here, my friend. Okay. Uh, so let's just hop right into it. So what we're going to need for this project is a pair of scissors for cutting, a glue stick, a pencil, an eraser. This is what your end result is going to look something like. And you will need three pieces of colored paper and one piece of plain white paper. So let's hop to it. The first thing that we want to do is draw our really nice mountainous kind of hill shapes. And we're going to be focusing a lot on layering with this project. So I'm going to start with some nice rolling hills, some little peaks. You want some really fun um, sort of kind of dynamic landscapes. That's the sort of theme word we're working with is dynamic landscape. And what that means is you know, um, mountains, hills, trees, lots of visual interest. We're not thinking about a flat landscape. We're thinking detail and lots of height and fun stuff. And of course I am using an H pencil. For those of you who aren't super familiar with the different kinds of pencils you can get, uh, H is the lightest and it is the lightest because they have the hardest leads. So when you're using an H pencil, it is not depositing quite as much pigment onto your page as a B pencil would. Hey, Zaya. Hey, Mike. I just have a question. What's up? I'm using a, a 4H pencil. A 4H. So is it, uh, is it so good to use on, a, uh, on this one? Absolutely. Uh, Actually, as the numbers go up on your H pencil, I've got a 6H here, as you can see. And so uh, mine would be just slightly lighter than yours. And so there's my little bit of landscape. Oh, I feel like I need a little bit more height here. Mountains and oceans are my favorite landscapes in nature. They are my favorite to visit. Ooh, and forests. What about you, Mike? Do you have any kind of favorite nature features? Um, just uh, mountains and hills. Mountains and hills. Nice. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so once we've got our lines, again, they're a little hard to see because I drew them very lightly, but if I hold them up, you can see them. I'm going to snip a little bit off of the bottom of my page because this page is the same size as our background page. I'm going to use yellow for my background page because it's nice and bright and sunny. And we want a little space in between these when we cut them out. So I just trimmed a bit off the edge and now I can start cutting along the lines that I have drawn. If anyone else has any particular type of landscape that they like as a piece of art, or even just that they like to visit, feel free to let us know in the comments.
want to keep in mind when you're cutting dynamic shapes like this is that you can be turning, see how I'm using my left hand to turn the paper. Try to keep that in mind. It uh, helps with the cutting process. Oh, we got a comment. I am a beach girl. I love to swim, says Crystal. I, I can agree with that. Beaches are awesome. So if you're doing this project and you find yourself a fan of beaches, perhaps you can, uh, you know, perhaps you want to leave a little more of your background page and put some blue at the bottom of that, you know? So ways you can incorporate your own ideas into this project and change it up. Okay, here we are. And I've got my bottom piece. So what I'm actually going to do is, because I don't want the pencil lines to show up on my finished project, I'm going to flip them around. Hmm. Oh, oops, this is my top one. And... Okay, so now I have my spaces here. And from this point on, if you would like, you can still make some more adjustments and different cuts to change up your landscape. Because right now I'm not really a fan of how much white space there is on here. I want a little more yellow here. So I'm just gonna take some artistic liberty and slice this right off. I'm gonna go and make a deep valley here. There we go. I like that a little bit better. And I can pull down my bottom piece a little bit too. And I actually think I want to take some more off of here. So once you've got your initial shapes cut, you can get a little more experimental with how they're actually going to look on the page. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Mike. Um, is it okay if I go over the, the page? You know, I think so. It's your art piece and you can make whatever makes you happy. So I'd say go for it. It makes it a little more interesting, so why not? Okay, so I am feeling pretty happy with what I've got so far with my shapes here. And so what we're using in this project is negative space and positive space. Uh, and so Positive space would be the primary focus or subject matter of the art piece you're doing. And negative space is everything around it. But what we're working with today uh, is something called ambiguous space. And what that means is that it can be kind of hard to tell what the positive or negative space is. And when you use ambiguous space on purpose, you can get some very, very cool artistic results. So that's our concept word for the day. So now what we want to do is start thinking about adding some more colors in. I'm going to go with this beautiful maroon um, paper. And so I'm going to, again, very, very lightly start drawing some shapes on here and I'm going to give myself just a little bit of height on that to make it a little more interesting. This one I won't be flipping over because the pencil lines are a lot harder to see on this paper and uh, there are two ways you can deal with the pencil lines that you don't want. You can either erase them or you can cut a little bit below them so that 
they stay on the piece of the paper that you're not going to be using. So I'm just cutting a little bit below my pencil lines and then I'm not going to have to worry about erasing. I'm definitely interested to see Mike's project because he chose very different colors than I would have chosen, uh, but I think they look pretty cool. Thank you. Um, here's one more thing, Sam. What's up? I'm not good at cutting. Uh oh. So is it okay if it kind of differs from my uh, from the shape that I that I face? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the goal is actually for them to have uh, different shapes. So realistically, that's kind of ideal if you're experimenting with some different... I'm sorry, I don't know where my brain was going. You're fine. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> uh, yeah, they don't have to follow exact shapes at all. Uh, this is a pretty free form sort of project. And the other thing is that if you don't really like how something looks, you can always just go back in and cut it differently. Uh, like I just did with my mountain. This is almost looking more like a stalagmite than a mountain. I think stalagmites, uh, I think I got it right. I think those are the ones that come up from the ground and stalactites are the ones that hang down. Very stalagmite up in here. So there's our first of the kind of different shapes going on. I'm going to throw another one in here. And I'm going to add another cool kind of peak to it. Some other things that you can think of for your shapes might be uh, trees. You might want to grab yourself some greens and throw some trees in there. I'm going to pass on the trees because I am a big fan of just mountains, but uh, definitely don't feel like you have to do this project the way that I'm doing it or the way that Mike is doing it because, you know, it's your artwork and... We actually, here at the MAG, think it is fantastic when people uh, take our projects and put their own spin on it, because that's what it's all about. Think outside the box and get creative. So I'm liking how my mountains are looking here. I think uh, trees are wonderful. Um, trees so are wonderful. Green, um, paper here, so I need to draw some trees. You're gonna throw some trees in. That's awesome. Yeah. I look forward to seeing those. Actually, I'm gonna swap over to Mike's screen and uh, show you guys what colors he's got going on because he's got some pretty cool ones. That is a very nice green. Thank you. I'm a fan. Stoked to see how these trees show up. Okay, so I have a couple of mountains. You know, I'm actually going to throw some, oh, just a little bit of blue down in the corner. Just a tiny bit. Maybe it's a river flowing down the mountain. Ooh, yeah. I love the contrast of a nice turquoise blue along with that uh, maroon. It's very, very nice. I also think that this side needs a little bit of blue too. So I'm gonna sneak my paper down behind this and uh, I'll just draw attention to it, although you've seen me do it the last couple of cuts I've made in this video. 
but I, when I'm drawing a part of my landscape, I'm tucking the paper behind the white paper just so I know where uh, it's about going to land because I want it to kind of flow nice and seamlessly when I cut it. So I'm making sure that where my colored paper ends is going to uh, sit behind my white paper. And so I don't want any, I'll give you an example. I just, I don't want any abrupt cuts down like this one here. I'm making sure that everything just flows into the mountain peaks that I've made. Okay, so now that I've got all my pieces cut, I'm just going to gently push everything into place where I feel like it needs to go. And once I'm happy with my composition, I can start gluing things in place. Now the gluing in this project is a little bit finicky because things are sitting in front of and behind each other. So I need to be thinking about my layers. So I think the thing that needs to get glued down first is going to be this layer because this is what's behind everything else is this top piece. So I'm going to gently clear everything away. I'm going to pull out my rusty glue stick. Yeah, so definitely remember you want to keep the shapes in the back glued down first. And uh, definitely take your time with the gluing on this project too, because uh, you're going to be sad if you glue something down and then realize that you wanted to put something behind it. It's going to be a bad time, so go slowly. So I know that these are going to be my next pieces that I glue but I always have to remember that I'm going to keep putting my other pieces in place so that I know where things are going to sit in relation to one another. So this guy needs to go up a little higher. And so my blue is going to be the next thing that I glue down. I'm actually going to hold it in place and throw a little bit of glue on the piece of it up here. And then that's going to hold it in place so I know exactly where it's going to sit and I can glue the rest. I'm going to do the same with my burgundy slash maroon piece here. I'm going to glue part of it and then glue the rest after I'm confident that it's sitting where I want it to sit. Um, oh, Sam, um, I just have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I have this, uh, I have this kind of glue, the purple one. Yeah. So is it going to dry transparent or is it going to it's going to dry transparent. I actually really love this purple glue. I find it works a little better than some of the other uh, plain glue sticks. And it's pretty cool how it dries clear. So it's good stuff. Good 
So you see how I'm gently peeling up the bottom of the pieces I'm gluing, but I'm also making sure that I'm not folding them. All right. Ooh, I think I, oh, there we are. Now this one's a little tricky, so I'm going to actually start. I've got this one that's in the middle of two things. So I'm actually going to glue the bottom of this piece, but I'm going to leave the top unglued. Whoops, I'm going to shove it over here. I'm going to glue down just enough so that it is sitting nice and square at the bottom of my page, but not enough that it prevents me from gluing this page where I want it. Again, we have to be very, very, very work slowly and think about those layers when you're doing this project. How's yours uh, going along, Mike? It's going. Um, I just have to cut under Tree. Cut some more trees. Yeah, maybe I'll just cut orchids. This is tedious. <laughs> just getting tired of it. Yeah. Sometimes the that's what you got to do with art. You got to be like, all right, I this is enough. This is good. All right, so I'm moving this into position. It's sitting where I want it to. Ooh, I gotta nudge that over just a bit. Now I can glue the rest of this mountain. Again, making sure that I'm not actually folding this, just gently bending it. And I'm not pressing too hard with the glue either. I'm making sure I get good coverage, but I don't want any folds in my landscape. We're getting close to finished now. I've just got a couple more pieces to add. And then we're done. If anyone's doing the project along with us or is going to do the project after this live stream, feel free to let us know in the comments which colors that you feel like you'd like to use for a landscape. There's my river. Now I could be done here, but you know what? I am a big fan of adding this weird little abstract funky blue sunshine. So I'm just going to throw that into my picture and that's going to be able to sit above everything else. So I'm not too worried about how to position it or anything like that because it's just going to sit over top of everything. Oh, um, I say yes. Yes, uh, I'm. I'm really slow at working. That's okay. So uh, what, when I glue things down, for example, this mountain, mm -hmm. do I have to glue it on the paper or glue it here on the mountain itself? I would recommend gluing on the mountain itself, uh, just because you might get some glue showing through on the paper. And while it does dry transparent, you will see streaks of it if you don't glue exactly where the mountain is going. So I would recommend just putting your glue right on the mountain pieces. So I'm cutting out my funky blue sunshine. Maybe this is a mountainscape on another planet that has a blue sun. And I'm just sticking it in a non-traditional place because why not? I feel like it adds visual interest. So I'm going to throw it down right here and create an interesting focal point. And there you have it. This is our cut landscape. 
I'm going to leave that there for just a moment. Uh, Mike, I know you're still working, but after you glue that piece down, do you want to show the camera? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm going to throw you up on the screen there. Then um, probably I'm going to show you, like, like oh, the tree! tree. <laughs> that is so fantastic! I love that. And I have three more. Three more! I can see them on the table there. That is great. It's now I'm battling with composition. Battling with composition! I don't know if I wanted to put the tree on the left or right. So, uh, if uh, someone uh, like in the audience, like if you're watching us, just tell me what your thoughts are. <laughs> Mike is going to the audience for some advice. I'm really, really like, that's my bad habit. <laughs> you know, the fun thing too with this project is um, that's another reason that we don't glue things down right away is that you can kind of think of it like puzzle pieces and just experiment with where oh, things are going to sit, right? Okay. All right, everyone. So this has been Live Art Tuesdays. I'm Saya. Uh, we had Mike as our guest. Um, ooh. next Tuesday we will be doing a project called Are Your Flowers Out? And we will have, uh, I believe Crystal will be leading that. It'll be a mixed media project with watercolor, yarn, and colorful paper. So uh, come visit us again next Tuesday at 11. This has been the Red Deer Museum and Gallery. If you would like to see any of our other uh, content, any of our other broadcasts, they will be available on our blog at www.reddeermuseum.com. You can also find us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Have a great day, everyone. Bye!